Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series of Java for Beginners. In this video we're going to be looking at more Boolean operators and we're going to be looking more into the if statement and also we'll introduce the else statement. So you remember from last tutorial we can have a Boolean called whatever, we called it A in this case, and we can set it equal to any mathematical equation uh, using any of these operators here that will return a true or a false value. So we can say if 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 for example you can see that we get true and then if we change that to 8 if 10 minus 1 equals 8 obviously that's false so you see we get the false value so another useful thing we can do in java with the uh, assigning a boolean a value is we can actually have more than one statement so we can say okay if this is true but also if another thing is true or and we, we can use uh, two different things for that. We can use the AND and the OR. So I'm going to add them here. We have uh, the AND operator, which looks something like this, is two ampersand signs. And then we have the OR operator, which looks like this. And it's two, uh, I don't know what call, you call these characters, I think they're called pipes. Uh, it's shift and then the key to the left of the letter Z. Uh, they're not lowercase L's or uh, uppercase I's. They're that special character there if you do a shift backslash. So let's see what we can do with these and or or statements. So if we have a condition like this, for example, we can say set boolean a equal to if 10 minus 1 equals 8. Okay, this is false. But then we can add another condition, for example. We may, uh, we may not require this to be true in our program. We could have another condition that if satisfied, uh, we can go ahead with whatever... Uh, thing we're trying to do. So if we uh, just put a space to make the code more readable, there doesn't have to be a space, uh, but it's easier, easier to read. Uh, what we can do now is do this uh, double pipe symbol, the or symbol, and then we can do another uh, another statement, another true or false statement. And this can again be in uh, any valid Boolean expression form. It can either be uh, a face value like true, it can either be an equation like this, or it can even be equal to another Boolean variable. For example, if we had a variable called uh, B, uh, like so. Uh, but we won't set it equal to uh, this. We'll just do another uh, equation, for example. Or actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and put the value of true here, just so I can show you how this works. So when I uh, run this, we're going to see true. And the reason we see true is because we set the boolean a equal to uh, if 10 minus 1 equals 8 or if true. So this or thing here is the key point. This or uh, condition here, this or, uh, this or symbol, the two pipes, it means uh, return true if either of these two statements is true. If like if one is true, if this one is true, or if this one is true, or if they're both true. Uh, it's going to return true. So this is useful when you only need one condition uh, to be satisfied and the other one doesn't really matter. So you can see that we have this 10 minus 1 equals 8, which is uh, clearly false. So this one is returning false here, uh, but this true value is just simply true. So we return the value true because one of these statements is true. Uh, so now we can take a look at the AND symbol here. And it does similar to the OR symbol, except both statements have to be true. Not one of them, uh, not just one of them has to be true. They both have to be true for this uh, condition to be equal to true. So if I hit run, you'll see we'll get false. And that's because we have this equal to true here, but our other statement also needs to be true. And in this case, it isn't. We can change this back to, uh, to be true. And you'll see that we get that. We get the... Uh, boolean a set to true. That's because both of these statements are uh, true. And I've said true a lot, so let's look at some false statements now. We can see uh, with the syntax of Java, we can have any number of and or or statements. I can put an or after this, and then we can have another condition, and then I can put an and after or whatever. But this is important to note. It's incredibly important to use brackets when you're creating your Boolean expressions because uh, this uh, statement here, we can see that there's no particular definition between the different ors and ands. 
if there's no clear bracket definition within these uh, Boolean expressions, uh, left to right, it, uh, it will read it directly from left to right and it can get very confusing. So it will say if this statement here and this statement here are true and then this whole thing here uh, or this statement is true and then this whole thing here, uh, the result of this whole statement here is and this are true. You can see it gets very hard to uh, keep track of. So to keep keeping this in mind, it is wise to separate the Boolean expression out into a series of brackets so that the statement is how you want it. So for example, if we want uh, this statement here, so we want the result of this one, if this and this are true, or if this is true, for example. So we've got two different uh, clear definitions now. We've got the result of these uh, brackets here uh, ordered together with the result of these brackets. So we can uh, predict, we can easily read what's going on here. We can see that 10 minus 1 equals 8 is false and then we're ending it with direct false value. So th uh, the AND statement for it to return true, both sides have to be true. In this case neither of them are true so this thing's just going to return false. Then we can say OR so uh, we can still, uh, it could still be a true statement if the things in this brackets were true, but unfortunately both of them are false. We're saying if false and false, uh, again when you use the AND uh, operator, both sides need to be true for it to return true. In this case, not even one is true, they're both false. So effectively we're saying uh, false or false and that, then that will return false because neither of them are true and it will return it to the value A here. And you see we get false. So sorry if that was a bit uh, confusing or a bit uh, too much. It's, I know it's kind of hard to read this code here, but the basic point I'm trying to make is uh, you need to be careful with your bracketing when you're making these sort of prolonged uh, Boolean statements. But as a beginner, you won't really be making uh, statements this prolonged, so it should be okay. Let's set, go ahead and set this back equal to a uh, flat value. So let's go ahead now and just use what we've learned directly in if and else statements so we can see uh, examples of how they work in code. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this system out print line because we're going to use it in a bit. And then we can go ahead and set up an if statement. So if we remember from last tutorial, the if statements in the form of if a condition is true, then do whatever is in the brackets. So we can go ahead and put a in here. And let's go ahead and make a new Boolean value called b, and it's equal to false this time. So we have two Boolean values, a and b. a is true and b is false. So we can say if a, and then we're going to paste this here, we'll system out print line, the value uh, condition is true. And then if we run this, we can see we get printed out condition is true because the condition of the if statement is equal to a and a is equal to true. So let's go ahead and put b in there. We'll see what happens. And you can see uh, nothing shows up. So let's go ahead and go ahead and add an else statement now. Uh, whenever we write an if statement, there is always opportunity to write an else statement. An else statement can't uh, exist without the if statement but the if statement can exist without the else statement. So what we need to do is, uh, after we've written if, after this ending bracket here, we can come down a line, and we can write else, and then do uh, open and closing brackets like so. And the else statement doesn't need a condition because the condition for the else statement is already implied. The condition of the else statement is pretty much the opposite of the condition of the if statement. So we're basically saying if a condition is true, do this, but else, if the condition of this is false, we're going to do this. So let's go ahead and paste that system out print line again, and we're going to write condition is false. So we can see how it's playing out here. So before when we ran it without the else statement, we can see that we got uh, just nothing, nothing appeared. But now if we run it, we can see we get condition is false. That's because uh, this b variable is equal to false here. So we say if the condition is true, nope, it's not true. Let's move on to the else statement. So uh, else otherwise, print out condition is false. 
And there's one more thing we can do with uh, if and else statements. Uh, we can actually make more than one uh, condition for the program we're using. So, for example, uh, say we had these two variables here, but there were several different cases we wanted to try out. We didn't. We don't just want to see if b is false or if b is true. Rather, do this, and if b is false, do this. We can actually have uh, an infinite number of cases. So, after we write the else statement here. If we go ahead and do a space, we can write else if, and an else if statement is different because we basically have a secondary condition. We're saying uh, if uh, if the condition is true, do this. If the condition is false, we'll move on to the next one. Check if this condition is true. If this is not true, we'll move on to the next one. If there's another else if down here, and there could be uh, any number of else if statements afterwards. So we'll check if this one's true. Then we'll check if the next one's true, if the next one is true, if the next one is true. And then at the end, there will most likely be a defining else statement. So if everything was false, if none of them uh, fit the condition. So let's go ahead and make a few of these. And then at the end, we'll just put an else statement. Uh, so let's go ahead and use some of the operators. We can say um, if B is true, we're going to do this b is not true so we'll move on to the next condition let's go ahead and check if b and a are true let's put them the other way around if a and b are true uh so let's go let's change the system out print lines here i'm gonna go ahead and copy these in so we're gonna say here we're gonna say b is true then we're gonna say a and b are true And then in this one here, uh, we'll check for if uh, A or B is true. So we can change that if A or B. And then in this final one, we can say uh, uh, A and B are false. So we've got four different statements here. We're checking the initial condition uh, of B. So we're saying, is B true? If B is true, we'll print out this thing here. B is true, but uh, B isn't true in this case, uh, it's false. So we'll move on to the next statement here. Else if, if A and B are true. So we're checking if A and B are true. So A is true, so we're okay so far. So we'll use the and operator, which means both uh, expressions on either side have to be true. Unfortunately, B is false, so we have to move on to the next one. Now we're checking if A or B are true. So if either of these are true, this statement is going to be run. So we can see that A is true, so this statement uh, returns true. We don't even need to check B because we already know uh, A is true. And when we use the or um, operator, only one of these has to be true. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see we'll get the third one here. We'll see A or B are true like so. Uh, to reach this final else statement, all of these would have to be uh, missed, which means uh, A and B would have to be false, because if we change this here, A to false, we can see that uh, if B is true, it's not true, it's false, we'll move on to the next one. If A and B are true, neither of them are true, so we'll move on to the next one. If A or B are true, nope, they're still both false. So finally, we move on to the final else statement, and this final else statement doesn't need a condition. It's basically saying, well, if all else fails, if this was false and this was false and this was false and any other else ifs were false, just do this final statement here. In this case, we just print out A and B are false because that was the condition. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, more uh, inbuilt functions we can do with Java, such as if and else if, similar to that. And we're also going to be looking more into uh, the operators like so.